Jesus to his friends. I have something important to do now. So they went. And when they could just see the city from a nearby hillside, Jesus said, let's have a parade. A parade? They Why a parade? And no one said anything because Jesus was already giving out instructions. I want two of you to borrow a donkey, he said. I went and tell the owner I need it. He'll understand. When the two friends returned, they hopped on his back, gently nudged his sides, and then started down the hill. The friends followed close behind. Hooray for Jesus, they shouted. Hooray! Hosanna! Hooray! Hooray! Hosanna for the son of David! Reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord 
to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so they approached Jerusalem near the Mount of Olives. It's selected as the official starting point for the entrance into Jerusalem. It makes a lot of sense. It overlooks the city on the eastern side of the temple. Small villages of Bethpage and Bethany. Small villages situated on the hill above the Kidron Valley, looking, um, overlooking Jerusalem. And he sends some of his disciples off ahead of him to go and collect a young colt. There are prophecies that we find mentioned of riding into Jerusalem upon a colt. Here's a passage from Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. The coming ruler of God's people. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he. Humble and riding on a donkey. On a colt, the fowl of a donkey. Jesus' departure from the Mount of Olives and entering Jerusalem upon a colt as he sends his disciples ahead of him to go and collect the animal that has never been ridden in order to enter Jerusalem upon its shoulders. We have elements here drawn from the prophet Zechariah. And so the allusions to Zechariah are implicit at this point in the story. There's no reason to think that they represent uh, Mark the evangelist and his interpretation of the events. But what we have here is perhaps a really significant fragment of Jesus' own theology in understanding who he is and what is taking place. So when Jesus arrives at the temple it's already late and he goes inside to see what sort of welcome he can expect. And so Jesus enters into the temple in Jerusalem. The hosannas, the palm branches, the coats paved his way into the city. And now he enters. Perhaps he expected a welcome, a celebration. Perhaps he was hoping that the religious leaders and the temple officials would welcome him, would recognise him as the Messiah, as God's chosen one. It seems to be an anticlimax, though, in this part of the story, because we're told it's late when Jesus arrives. He goes into the temple nonetheless and he looks around and then he leaves again. All that fuss to get there and to turn around again and to go back to the Mount of Olives. What was that all about? I've often thought that Jesus' triumphant entry was all about arriving in Jerusalem, arriving at the temple being recognised by the pilgrims, by his followers, by those on the road, that he was the anointed one, the king, like King David was, or King Solomon in the history of the Jewish people. I expected it had something more to do with the journey itself, 
but perhaps Jesus was expecting to be recognised when he got there he just looks around something about what Jesus sees though perhaps is not what he was expecting perhaps makes him angry perhaps makes him annoyed makes him full of judgement he will be returning to the Mount of Olives uh, that evening but in the morning he's coming back but he's not coming with palm branches tomorrow he's coming to tip over the merchant stalls the tables the money changers all of those who were using his father's house for their own ends to rip off the people Jesus is coming but he's coming in judgment into the temple his journey of welcome and celebration ends in a visit that sets his teeth on edge for the next day this visit to the temple sets Jesus on a collision course with the religious authorities who after tipping up and wrecking the place chasing people out with a, with a homemade whip sets him on a course uh, <laughs> to upset those in authority at the time those who would want to arrest him those who wish to see him dead Dear God, today we give thanks that you sent your Son to pave the way for our lives to be set free through Jesus' death on the cross. Thank you for what this day stands for, the beginning of Holy Week, the start of the journey towards the power of the cross, the victory of the resurrection and the rich truth that Jesus truly is our King of Kings. We give you praise and honour for your ways are righteous and true. We give you worship for you are holy and just. We declare that your love stands firm forever. Thank you that your ways are far greater than our ways. Your thoughts far deeper than our thoughts. Thank you that you had a plan to redeem. Thank you that you make all things new. Thank you that your face is towards the righteous and you hear our prayers and know our hearts. Help us to stay strong and true to you. Help us not to follow the voice of the crowds, but to press in close to you, to hear your whispers and seek you alone. We praise you. We bless you, Lord. Thank you that you reign supreme and we are more than conquerors through the gift of Christ. Lord, we are made in your own image, but we fall so short of the mark. Please forgive us for all we have said or not said, thought or not thought, and done or not done. We are so sorry and ask that the power of the Holy Spirit be with us so that others may see you in us and come to know you as their Saviour too. Help us to turn away from what is wrong and be good ambassadors for you. We bring to you today the leaders of our nations. Give them wisdom and strength to work together to bring peace and harmony to our world. We pray for all those who are persecuted for their faith. Give them strength and hope. We pray for all members of your church that they would grow in having gospel conversations with unbelievers. We pray that with the gradual easing of lockdown restrictions, People will go about their business sensibly 
with thought to those who remain vulnerable to coronavirus. Help us to think of ourselves less and think more about others. May we use every moment for God's great glory and praise. Lord, we pray for those who are ill at this time, whether physically, mentally, emotionally or spiritually. May they know the comfort of your presence and be given strength and wisdom to deal with their individual circumstances. We pray for those recently bereaved and particularly for the families and friends of Alec Gibson, Alex Morris, Muriel Coxon, Margaret Kinson and Barry Galliers. May they be granted peace and strength as they mourn the loss of their loved one who is now resting in peace. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>